But this morning, go ahead and open your Bibles to the 18th proverb. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want, I want to give you an argument while you're turning there. Some of y'all may have or may not have seen, um, somebody got on one of the news networks recently, and this, uh, that, the, uh, well, Pierce Brosnan, not Pierce Brosnan, Pierce Morgan. He, he just, he, he, needs, he needs Jesus. Anyway, he got a, he got a Bible scholar on there because he was going to prove that Jesus didn't say anything about homosexuality and, and all that kind of stuff. And so he got the Bible scholar on there, and he was going to question him. He knew he had him. He thought, boy, he read through it. He, he couldn't find where Jesus specifically said anything about, about homosexuality. Except the Bible scholar said exactly what I tell you. He said, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Which meant all the, moral code, all the moral code of the Old Testament is still in force. If it was a sin, it's still a sin. He didn't say, I came to destroy that. I said, I came to fulfill it. Amen. And then he said this. And then Jesus said, that, you know, talking about divorce, he said it wasn't so in the beginning. The Bible says that a man, he said that a man should uh, leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife. And the two shall be one flesh. Amen. So he did say the marriage is between a man and a woman. Amen. So Jesus did address those things. But when, when, he, when he said that I did not come to destroy the law, Understand this. The moral code of God is still the moral code of God. Just because we're in the new covenant doesn't mean that murdering someone is no longer a sin. Amen? That homosexuality is no longer a sin. That's, that's, that's an erroneous teaching. And just because you can't find him specifically stating it, when he said that he didn't come to destroy the law, it meant that those things are still in force. Now, if Jesus directly changed something, you have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, do good to them that despitefully use you. Okay? Then that is an authoritative change. Amen? And he established that. Unless he did that, it's still in force. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, it's just like, you know, people who, you get, well, you got people now who come along and want to teach. I, I'm going to get to my message. Hold on. We want to say, uh, we can't eat pork. You know, they go back, they always want to go back to the Old Testament laws of dietary, whatever. Except Peter had the vision. And God let down all manner of beasts and says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. He said, not so, Lord, for nothing unclean has ever touched my lips. He said, what the Lord hath cleansed, thou shalt not call unclean. That was a double meaning there. He, he was, the, the prophetic meaning was the, the Gentiles coming into the church. But it was also that we could eat pork. Hallelujah, Eastern Carolina barbecue. <laughs> Anybody like that? Hallelujah. You have some Memphis ribs. Glory to God. I and mean, some bacon in the morning. Y'all with me? Hallelujah. All right. Shrimp. Fried, scampi, boiled. Japanese steakhouse style. You couldn't eat shrimp under the old covenant. How many are glad that God let down the, 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 the sheet with all manner of unclean things in there and said it's, un, it's clean now? Yeah. Especially when you go, to, when you go over to see Red, Red Lobster. Hey, Amen. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. All right. Now, just said all that just to say, you know, we, we need to make sure we understand um, that unless the New Testament specifically addresses something, then it's still, according to the Word of God, a certain way. God didn't change who he is. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. Let's go. Proverbs, the 18th proverb, verse 21. Um, Hallelujah. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are where? In the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Um, the words of our mouth govern our lives so we need to watch what we say and if we're not doing a good job of it we need to change the psalmist said in one place David actually said this he said put a watch over my mouth that I might not sin against thee why your words gonna get you in trouble now how many know and I and I can confess to this myself how many know it's easier to say what you feel than what is real Now, if you want what you feel to become real, keep saying it. Joe, did you get all the Nerf balls and darts and guns and everything before people came in? Because I'm, I'm getting ready. To, I feel like I'm getting ready to get stoned or something. Hallelujah. Psalm 19:14 says this: "Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in Thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer." 
Now, folks, let me, can I say something here? There's this new mantra in the church that we can just say all kinds of stuff. I mean, and it's okay. I think we need to judge some things according to Psalm 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. <clears throat> amen. I said amen. We got, we got Christians saying things they just shouldn't be saying. Now, now I'm not talking about, this is, we, we understand a, a, a negative confession. But there's just things we shouldn't be saying in the church, outside the church, anywhere. And <clears throat> I believe if we put the filter of let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, that's going to clean up a lot of things that come out of our mouth. Say amen, oh me, or help me, Lord. Come on now. I didn't hear any of those things. I know somebody needs to say something. <laughs> amen. Or oh me, there you go. No, we, ha yeah, Al, I heard an Al somewhere. Hallelujah. That was a delayed reaction. You know, just understand this. This is a service that we could pray for your toes at the end. Hallelujah. But I'm probably not going to. I want you to suffer for a few days. Then we'll pray for them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get the point. Hallelujah. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, and I'll let notice that just not the words of your mouth. What are you meditating on? What is it that you, you dwell on and you think about? And, you know, and you're, it's going through your mind and you're, you're feeding on that gets into your heart. Now, let me say something. You can find out usually what's going on in there by what's coming out of here. Not necessarily when somebody's watching. Somebody's governing it. We all clean it up then. Hello. I mean, you could be talking the most negative thing, whatever, and some faith preacher walk in and all of a sudden, yeah, glory be to God, I'm blessed going in and blessed coming out. Hallelujah. They walk off, oh, God, it's a rotten day. Start singing, hey, it's the gloom, despair. <laughs> Amen. So, th listen, we're going to preach to all of us. Me, you, people listening on the internet. We, if we're going to be able to do the things we need to do, we're going to we're gonna have to get things right. Now, listen, we've got the, f the thought police in the world. We've got the PC police in the world who are governing everything you say about what you can say in the natural. But we don't, we don't have enough uh, Holy Ghost police on our own selves about what we're saying in the spiritual. Amen. You know, we got, you got the thought police saying you can't say this, you can't say that, you can't refer to this, you can't refer to that, you can't talk this way, you can't talk that way. You know, the NFL is getting ready to start something where they're going to start penalizing people for using a certain word. It doesn't matter. If you say it on the field, it's a 15-yard penalty. The second time, you're ejected from the game. And it's only one word, you know. It's a racial slur. But, you know, the only one that's going to be is this one racial slur. So we got that going on. They're going to penalize them. If that, 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 if the guy go to the committee one more, one more step, and it becomes official. You know? Well, if the world's trying to control how people... Listen, you can't control... The, the tongue's an unruly evil, which no man can tame. How do we tame our tongue? We tame it by... We, we control it with what goes in, what we're meditating on. And if you're not thinking enough on the Word of God, you're not going to get enough of the Word of God coming out. So you're going to have to put word in to get word out. There's an old uh, computer acronym you know, that we've, we've used since... Lord has uh, 60s probably at least, and you've you've heard it before, G I G O, and it meant no. It didn't matter how great the computer program was. It didn't matter how slick it was. It didn't matter how well it ran. If the computer operator put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. In other words, if they put the wrong data in, the wrong data is going to come out. It doesn't matter how good the program because the program will only process what data you give it. Being the most awesome program in the world. I've written some cool stuff. Dick, Dick spent 40 years writing code. Writing code. Hallelujah. If you go in there, look at him at night, he glow, his little eyes glow with little CRT screens on them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sit, Melinda was a systems analyst. Hallelujah. Bill does everything. Yeah. Huh? He's, he's, so we got all these techie and but, but see, Dick was a hardcore code puncher. My kind of guy. Little cobol here. Yeah. Second time, not my kind of guy. I was an RPG guy. Hated cobol. <laughs> yeah, that's right. People like cobol? We, we, we get a prayer cloth. <laughs> if you like cobol, you need to be prayed for. 
But the thing was, we run a computer program, and the operator, if it comes up with the wrong stuff, stupid computer, it's a piece of junk. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you go back and find you put the wrong stuff in. It can't process it to come out the right answer if you put the wrong stuff in to work with. It's like when I was a kid one time, I was, um, I was oh, I was, my parents were divorced, and, and my dad was working, um, he worked for Greenville Utilities during the day, climbing poles, and he worked at a gas station at night and had me and my little brother, my, little, my older brother, uh, taking care of us. And so the neighbor would watch us while he was working in the evenings. Well, watching was, was relative for that era. You know, just make sure we didn't run out of the house and burn stuff down and stuff. You know, somebody came to see us one time. The first thing they came to see us, we lived in a two-story apartment. It was a duplex. And uh, they, had, they had a banister that went from the top floor all the way down. <laughs> I mean, we used to get, dad, my dad would get a big, tall Christmas tree by 12 foot, and we would walk up the steps and put the, the topper on. That's how, I mean, it was, that's how it was open it was. But there was a, there was a couch right there at the, at the bottom. You know, you, so, so, actually, it was the, the, my, the, the, my, the, anyway. So, my dad was going to get remarried, and uh, he was dating somebody. So they came to the house to beat the boys. We got called to come down. Well, how did we come down? The way we always came down. <laughs> On the banister. <laughs> hit the end table, ran across the back of the couch to the other end table and hit the floor. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, <clears throat> so we're living there. And one day I decided I'm going to make... Um, Cool Pops. Remember Cool Pops? You take Kool-Aid, put them in that little tray with the little sticks you stick in there and put them in the freezer and freeze them. So I made the recipe. Said I got some white stuff that wasn't sugar. It was granulated. <laughs> it was salt. <laughs> and so um, I, I came out and my, one of my little friends was nearby and, and said, come here and get one. And he got one. Story. His mom was with him. She said, well, tell him it was good, honey. He said, I can't. It's terrible. It's t- it's terrible. Sorry, I can't even get it out. Well, what was wrong? It, it was colored the right color. It froze. It was on the little, it came out. You, you remember you run water over it and, and you pull it out and it was a nice, this nice cylinder look. I mean, you, you had your nice sucker there. Now we just buy them and throw them in the freezer in that little plastic thing. Yeah. Not, half as, not nearly as much fun. I can't, Mom. It's terrible. So my dad took it. Well, oh, God. So we started investigating. I put, it was salt. Well, see, we didn't get the end result we were looking for because we put the wrong ingredients in. And when we don't put the right ingredients into our life, we're not going to get the results coming out that we want. It might look right. It might have the right color to it, but there's something wrong with it. Amen? And so, we, you know, we, we can't put doubt and unbelief in and expect to get a faith result on the other side. We've got to put the Word in. We've got to put Holy Ghost stuff in. Amen? Praying in the Spirit. Putting the Word in. Why? Because when we, when we get the package all done and we get out and we get ready to present it and to use it, if it doesn't have the right stuff in it, it ain't going to be right. Now, boy, did, we, did, we had to throw all that away. Duh. Well, see, I was, I was like, well, I was like five. I just needed white granulated stuff in there. Are you here? I didn't know. It was back then you used Kool-Aid. Remember, Kool-Aid didn't have the sugar in it back then. It was a package. You had to mix the sugar in it and stir it up and all that stuff. I thought I would have done some kind of awesome job. And that's, see, now, you can get your feelings hurt when it doesn't work out right, or you can make adjustments and do it right. You made a mistake. You used the wrong thing. Okay? If you're not getting the results you're looking for, then go back and find out what you did wrong and start adjusting it and make it right. You don't just sit there and get mad at somebody because they told you you did it wrong. I ain't going back to that church no more. They told me I did it wrong. I'm just going to tell you one thing. And I tried my best, but your best won't good enough if you didn't do it right. So you're going to have to back up and make adjustments and get it right. That's not a condemnation. That's not a slam. That is the actual facts of life. Amen. You can walk up to your car right now all you want to and take a hand crank. You know how they used to start engine and try to start your car. You're not going to start your car that way. It don't work that way anymore. 
Well, how are you going to start it? Well, you're usually going to get in and put the key in and turn it. Unless your controller dies. Then you say, woo! Everybody say, woo! You don't want your ECM or your PCM to die. How do you know? Because mine did. Hallelujah. It's not cheap. But you usually just get in your car and you turn the crank. Amen. Now you got cars, if you just have your key in your pocket, you push a button. There's a little control chip there going back and forth. You hop in, where's the key? Don't go anywhere. Just keep it in your pocket and you push the button. That's cool. You got one of them? Oh, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry's got one of them. Puts his little rider hat on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. See, it's not just. See, one of the things we did wrong when we taught confession, or people, or people heard wrong, was as long as they kept saying the right stuff all the time. See, you've got to meditate right. I said, you've got to meditate right. Um, <clears throat> let's get in my notes, but I might want to run over there. Some of you might want to help me find it. Jesus said, in one place he said, it's not what goes into a man that defiles, but what comes out of him. You know what that is right off? Because when you think about meditating, what's going in? Somebody got that real quick? Matthew 7, no, that's not Matthew 7, that's judgment. Mark what? Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Okay. Been at Raymond a while there, huh? Mark, Mark 7. All right. Not Mark 11, Mark 7. 7 11. Hallelujah. Now listen. Understand that Jesus is speaking in, re in relevance to the, you know, the hypocrites of keeping the law of Moses and that kind of thing and, and uh, teaching for do doctrines, the commandments of men. Remember back up Mark 7 7, he says, um, How be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. Well, they were teaching all kinds of stuff. The, doctor, the, the Pharisees were teaching, teaching stuff that wasn't in the law. Right. With, in line in their pockets with it. We got some of those folks running around today. Okay? But he comes down here and he goes, and when he called all the people to them, he said, hearken unto me, everyone, and understand. Understand. There is nothing from within out of man that entereth in him that can defile him, but the things that come out of him, they are the things that defile him. If a man has ears to hear, let him understand. Or let him hear. And he entered into the house of the people, and the disciples asked him concerning the parable. He said, are you without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever thing from without entereth into a man cannot defile him, because it entereth not to his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats? That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For with that, from within, out of the heart of, uh, heart of men proceeds evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Now understand, he is speaking in respect to that the Pharisees and the lawyers were spending all their time about how you eat and the method you eat and the ordinances of how you eat and they're saying that all was defiling you and Jesus said, what's coming out of your heart is really what's defiling you. In other words, what you're putting into your heart is what's going to defile you. Now, it out of the heart proceeds evil things. That's where pride comes from. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And see what, see, what the Pharisees would teach was, if you did all the ordinances right, you'd be clean. And that's not true, because your heart's still messed up. If you ate the right kind of, you ate the right meat, or sacrificed right, you did this, you did that, you did everything right, you would be clean. That's not true. That's not true even now. Even when we teach on living holy and living right, that doesn't cleanse you. That should be an outgrowth of your walk in faith with God. Right. Amen. And you should, but you should do it. You can't just kind of hide under grace and say, no, I don't have to do that because that's, that's a work. No, that's not a work. That should be the natural outgrowth of living for God, is living holy and living right. You, sh you can't live unholy and think that, you're, that everything on the inside is right. Why? Because the Bible, Jesus just said that if there's evil thoughts, pride, and all that stuff coming out of you, it's coming out of your heart. Amen. And that means you've been feeding on or meditating on, even as a Christian. <coughs> Excuse me. E.W. Kenyon said, you go back and read his, write, read his writings, he said this. He said, a Christian who does not renew his mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner. 
Well, what does Romans chapter 12 say? You know, um, verse 1. I, I've gotten where I, 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 I kind of get hung up on getting that first word for that verse going so I can quote the whole thing. I'm not sure. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Isn't that interesting? A living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your... Now, the King James says reasonable service. The Greek says spiritual, which is your spiritual service. And be not... Conf Listen, isn't that interesting? Don't be conformed. I mean, it says, he says there... Present your body a living sacrifice. Now, folks, you're going to have to deal with your body. And you can deal with your body with, with different things. You're, you know, one thing is your confession. You speak over your body. You're not going to do that. No. Remember we talked about a couple weeks ago, the Holy Ghost will give uh, uh, power to your no. He'll empower your no. When you make that step, he'll take hold with you and, and give you the power to walk it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Be not conformed to this world. And then, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Now, uh, conform, we, we've said this before, but I, when you teach this, you have to say this, because somebody might be listening for the first time. Or we might have somebody sitting here who's tuning in for the first time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That happens, you know. You can have people sitting in church for years, all of a sudden you, you say something, or usually the guest speaker says what you said 400 times, and they go, wow, I never heard that before. And I'm sitting on the front row, when they come up and tell him, that's the best thing I ever heard. No one's ever said that before, I've never heard it. And I'm thinking, I taught a 20-week series on that. And you were there for most of it. But you just keep rejoicing, thank God they got it. They finally got it, Hallelujah. So the word conform comes from the Greek word that means to be fashioned or molded. And just like my little Kool-Aid lollipop thing stuck in that thing, they, they took on the shape of the cylinder they were put in. And the word conform here, which says be not conformed, don't be fashioned and molded and shaped according to the world. Amen. But be ye transformed. In other words, let me say this. If there's a but there, meaning there's something that's going to have to take place in order not to be conformed to this world. See, the world's constantly got pressure on you to mold and, and, and take on its image. Now, if you say anything anywhere that the Bible says homosexuality is in, you're a homophobic. You're a hate preacher. You're spewing disgusting hate because you don't think homosexuality is, a, is right. That's not what I think. It's what the Bible says. And as a believer, if I'm a Christian and I'm a believer, then I believe the Bible. But society's grown beyond that. Society's messed up. Yeah. Yep. It's got the wisdom of this world. I was telling Nathan this morning, we were talking about things. And said, you know, the Bible says that the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. That means that anything that's coming out of the world has a devilish spirit to it. And so people say stuff, and it'll be intellectual, and we've done studies, and da 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 you got devilish wisdom operating here. Well, I don't agree with that. Okay, that's your prerogative. Now I'm sticking with the Bible. And as a, as a minister, I am obligated to take the position of the Bible. I don't like that. We're sticking with the word. So don't be fashioned, shaped, molded according to the world, but be ye transformed. The Greek word that's translated transformed comes from a word, the word metamorpho. Anybody can figure out what came out of that? Metamorphosis. There is a metamorph. Now listen, be ye transformed. Don't be shaped, fashioned, molded according to the world, but have a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind you got to think on something other than what the world's spewing out. Hello? The world spews out devilish wisdom, earthly wisdom, sensual wisdom. How much of the wisdom of the world is centered around sexual things and sensuality, perverseness in those arenas? See why? Because it has a demonic, devilish influence trying to entrap humanity in a realm of carnality where they cannot live out of their spirits. 
Man was designed to live out of his spirit, not out of his flesh. Your flesh is your earth suit. It is a tool that allows you to function in this realm. It is not what you're to be led by. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. God loves carnal Christians. But they're not led by Him. Those that are led by their spirits, that are led by the Spirit of God in their spirits, are the, are, are the sons of God. They're led by the Spirit of God. Carnality will lead you into destruction. Now let me say something, folks. When, when Romans 3.23 says the wages of sin is death, it doesn't mean just because you're sin you're going to hell. Death has re reference to the kingdom of death. I'm, we, well, I thought you were talking about confession. Well, we got on the meditation part. Anything that is associated with the kingdom of, de of Satan, with devilish, sensual, and earthly wisdom, is death. It is of the kingdom of death. So the wages of sin, let's just say it this way, is destruction. It's going to bring destruction in areas of your life. Are you here? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Now, that, that he, the Hebrew word there does mean destruction. There are ways that seem right to men. Yeah, earthly, sensual, devilish wisdom. It came out of Satan. And carnal men. What happened to Adam? The minute that he transgressed God's commandments, his thinking became perverse. And when God said, up and said, what did you do? He said, you gave me that woman and she did it. He's passing the buck right up the front. God goes to the woman, well, the serpent beguiled me. I mean, first pass in the bucket history, Adam. Didn't take him all of two seconds to learn to be conniving, sneaky, earthly. Hello? Because when God said, what have you done? He said, he actually blames God. Well, if you hadn't have given me that woman, I wouldn't be in this state. But the minute what the thing was, early when God gave him that woman, she got a name. Whoa, man! Hello, all of a sudden, woman is great. But when she, call, when she calls in the sin, she didn't call in the sin. She goes study your Bible a little bit better than your Sunday school pictures. I remember the Sunday school picture. Adam's out there fishing over here in the lake, and Eve comes up with this, this apple, you know, and he, he, he gets tricked into eating it. The Bible says she did give, she had turned and give the man, the man to eat with her. He watched the whole thing happen, could have stopped it. But what happens, to, what happens to the man as soon as he falls? He becomes earthly, sensual, and devilish. Cain kills his brother because God accepted his sacrifice and not the one he wanted to bring. See, God requires blood sacrifice. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. Well, you've got you to read between the lines on this, on, on here. God found... Um, Abel's sacrifice pleasing and not Cain's. Cain brought the fruit of the ground. Abel brought the blood sacrifice. See, all Cain had to do was barter with Abel and get a, blood, get a, get a lamb or something and offer the sacrifice. But he came with his own wisdom. And the end was destruction. He killed his brother over a sacrifice. See, the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. That means you can't meditate on it. You can't take what all your buddies had to say about the Bible and just run off with it. Hello? Well, I think the Bible, you know, I think this. I mean, we even got preachers running around saying, if we had just left out the Old Testament, we wouldn't have any problems we got. I think we'll keep the whole Bible. We'll get rid of your, your teaching. Because if you're not going to take the whole, I don't want any of your half. Now, we've got to meditate in the Word. You can't meditate in what your friend's opinion of it is. Hello. You've got people rewriting the Scriptures. They've got, you know, making God genderless, or they're making God a woman. And, and she said, and all this kind of stuff. I think God knew what he was, or is. We know he's the only begotten son, not the only begotten daughter. But you've got, you've got the, fem the feminist Bible where they did that. You've got to watch people who start changing the Bible around to fit what they want to hear. And their narrative. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's stupid and dangerous. You don't change the Word of God to fit your narrative. 
Now, we've got to meditate in the Word. Your friend's opinion of the Word is irrelevant. But I want to be liked. You're not going to be liked. Unless you totally compromise your beliefs. The only way to be liked by the world and appreciated by the world is to totally compromise your beliefs. Well, they turned on Jesus in a heartbeat. Now, we walk in love. We demonstrate the love of God. And, you know, we, you know I, I went over to a neighbor recently, and, and uh, they, were, they were dealing with some stuff. I said, well, look, you know, uh, we, we pray for the sick on the first Sunday night of every month, and, and we pray for prayer calls. I got some in church. I'll bring it to you. Because they're talking about the surgery they had could kill them. Nasty town the surgery. I'm like, you get, you know, number one, get a second opinion. Number two, we'll pray for you. Or number one, we'll pray for you. Get a second, whatever. Just, you know, helping them. People, people in the world don't have the right thing. Don't be conformed to the world. Now, if you're not going to be conformed to the world, but you're going to be transformed by renewing of your mind, you got, and then one scripture says we, we renew our mind with the washing of the water of the word. We have, to wash our, we have to renew our minds with the word of God. What did James say? Receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. Not your pneuma, not your spirit, but your soul, your suke. Now, the word there, so, so saved, is sozo. Now, in reference to the human spirit, it means to be born again. In reference to the physical body, it means to be healed or made whole. In reference to the soul, it means to be restored. Amen? So, when he says there in James 1, 21, he says, Receive with meekness the engrafted word. Let the word take root in your thinking. And it's able to restore, make sound your suke, your soul. But you've got to think right to act right. That's why Kenyon said, if you don't renew your mind to the Word of God, you'll act like a sinner. Because how you think governs what you do. You can be born again and love the Lord and think like a sinner and go out and act like one. I remember um, my pastor. Now, most of you haven't seen Pastor John. Some of y'all have been here when Pastor John's been here a number of years ago. Uh, we're talking about having him come back sometime in, uh, you know, not too far distant future and uh, minister here. We, we love Pastor John and, and Sister Debbie. And, um, but his nickname when he, before he got saved was Chiquita because he shot dirty needles, shot heroin with dirty needles and had, hep had hepatitis so bad he was yellow. Then he got born again, delivered and healed, praise God. Now his brother Dave, who's an associate pastor at the church there in Greenville, was demon-possessed. Hallelujah. Well, Dave got saved, got the devil cast out. And somebody said, yeah, we cast the devil out of your brother, but he got saved. You know. <laughs> Devils and stuff, you know. And, uh, well, it went long after Pastor John got saved. And uh, he went over to Dave's apartment. Dave opened the door. He threw in and said, threw a six-pack. He went, hey, I got saved. Let's celebrate. <laughs> He'd be riding down the road with his buddies, rolling the joints, lighting them, and handing them witnessing to them. But what happened? He started getting his mind renewed to the Word of God, found you can't do those things as a Christian, and he stopped doing it. Amen. But when he first got saved, he didn't know any better. His spirit was a love of God, but his head was messed up. I mean, he came out of shooting up and all this kind of stuff. So, he, you know, gave him some, some leeway. You know, he can't go, well, if you got anything, he'll, be, he'll straighten up. No, you got to teach. The Word of God has to teach you how to straighten up. The Word of God teaches you how to act. Amen. Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and says these things are, are, aren't even named among the Gentiles. You shouldn't be doing them. See? Had to be taught from the Word. Amen. So we're not to be conformed to this world. We're to be transformed. My. All right, we're starting church at 10 o'clock from now on. <laughs> Janice says yes. <laughs> we used to start at 10, and uh, we couldn't get everybody here on time. So I, I, I had this brilliant idea. It's probably earthly. We're going to move the service time to 1030 so everybody will get here on time. You know what they did? They just slept 30 minutes later. Still got here late. Hallelujah. That means that school of the Bible would have to be at 9 o'clock. Well, that's, that's a winner. Hallelujah. All right. Anyway, moving right along until 10, 1230. Janice just sucked in a Volkswagen off the road out there. I saw her. Out of the low pressure system here, just pulled it right off the road. I'm teasing. You can handle it. Because yeah, Janice will drop anybody that talks about me. And then turn around and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. No problem. Hallelujah. 
But when, we're, when, when the world is, is, is pressing upon our thinking and pushing against us, you have to remember where, that's com- where it's coming from. And if you keep meditating on that, that will govern how you think. So we're going to have to learn that the Word of God has to go in us so that we can no longer be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that we begin to think the way God thinks, act the way, and listen, when you start thinking like, remember God said in Isaiah 55, uh, 55 my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts, saith the Lord, for as, my, for as the sun, uh, for as the, uh, the rain's coming down, but it's, it's higher, higher than your ways. Turn out there, so my ways higher than your ways. I'm, I'm trying to get that right word. Here, here's how we do it. We open up the Bible. And we turn to it in the Bible. And we quote the Bible. Hallelujah. Instead of trying to do it from memory. Hallelujah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. That means God has a different thought process than you do. Amen. God has a different thought process than you do. Well, how do I tap into that? You meditate on the Word. You meditate on what he says until it takes root in you. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher. That was what I was looking for. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. God doesn't think like you. See, we, we reason stuff out with our human reason saying, well, you know, that's okay. You know, everybody, you know, what, what are they going to do with that baby if they keep that baby? It's going to bring a baby into this world, suffering world. They ought to go ahead and abort that baby. Who do you think you are killing babies? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with abortion. Well, you go talk to the Lord about that face to face. See how that works out for you. There's going to be a judgment on abortion doctors and abortion proponents. That if they don't get saved, they will face God over that. I'm just going to tell you. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. Hallelujah. For as the rain, see, we got people who, who reason stuff out. They reason sin out. And if we don't renew our minds to the word of God and let the word of God become the narrative of our life, then we're not going to think like God. His ways are going to continue to be higher than our ways. And what's going to happen? You're going to continue to be. See, <clears throat> the wisdom of this world, this earthly, sensual, and devilish, is the mold that is trying to form around your thinking and press your thinking into a cookie cut cutter shape of worldly thinking and you'll have everybody in the world agreeing with you come on now you'll have newscasters agreeing with you you'll have documentaries agreeing with you you'll have medical studies that agree with you when you think like the world but God says my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways they're higher and he says don't be conformed to this world's thinking be transformed by the renewing of your mind for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, returneth not thither, but waters the earth, and maketh it to bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Remember over there in Corinthians where he says, I give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Multiply your seed stones and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void tohu, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. When you take the word of God and allow the word of God to be your meditation, James says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to restore your suke. And so now what happens? When you feed and meditate and listen to and take adherence to and give credence to the word of God, it changes the way you think from the worldly method. Where is that scripture? You know, the wisdom of this world at first earthly, sensual, and devilish. Somebody said James 3. Hallelujah. Who, all right, let's, just, let's back up here in verse 13. Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good lifestyle his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended from above is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that, I, that, that is from above... Is first pure and then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without hypocrisy and partiality without hypocrisy. The fruits of righteousness are sown in peace of them that make peace. See, now the peace of God's different. The, the wisdom of God's different. 
Wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Wisdom of God is different. It's peace, mercy, gentle. It's easy to be entreated. It creates the fruits of righteousness. Amen. And so, Romans, we're back on Romans now. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed. Had a metamorphosis by the renewing of your mind. Then he goes on, the next verse says this, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. We need to stop saying what we think about stuff and go find what the Bible says about it and then change what we think. You're going to find a lot of stuff that you think doesn't line up with what the Bible says. And if it doesn't line up with what the Bible says, what you think has got to go. Well, I don't like that. I think I got the Well, you don't think. Well, you keep thinking you got the right to do what you ever you want to do. There was a way that it seems right to a man, the end thereof is death, destruction. Now, here's a, listen. God doesn't tell this thing so you can't have fun and you can't enjoy life. He tells it so you can. Hello? Now, Magic Johnson thought he was having fun when he had uh, relations with 20,000 women. Until he found out he had HIV. And all the women thought they were having fun with Magic Johnson. Until he just put out, had to go public with it and say, listen, you know, I've, I've been with 20,000 women. He said, 20,000 women. All right, 20,000 women, you listen? I got AIDS. The thrill is gone. I was, I, was, I was trying, I was getting ready to go one of those songs right then. Thank you, Janice. The thrill is gone. Ain't nobody bragging about sleeping magic anymore. No, I ain't never seen that man. Hello? God didn't want you, see, God, God requires uh, um, that our, our bodies are to be preserved for our, our eternal spouse, our, our life, not eternal, but our, our lifelong spouse. Now, if everybody stays celibate until they're born, I mean, until they're married, and the only person they ever have relations with is their spouse, man and woman, hello? I don't care what the government says, I know what the Bible says. Then you don't, you don't have to worry about AIDS. Well, you can get it from blood transfusion. Listen, if you're smart, you have your blood checked first. But you're not going to get it from just running around with 20,000 women. But the wisdom of this world says, you know, how many know one of the big, big songs of the late 60s, early 70s? There's a road on a distant shore. You know that? There's a road on a distant shore. And it goes and ends up, that, that course ends up something like this. And if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. Remember that? Thank you, Nathan. Love the one you're with. That's the world's wisdom. God's wisdom says what? Keep your body under. Avoid fornication. Why? There's safety in the word. Holiness isn't just, it, it is so you can stand in his presence without condemnation, but it's also a preservation to your life. It keeps you out of things that will hurt you. God didn't call sin, sin, because he just wanted to be mean. It is destructive to your life. And so when we meditate in the right, in the word of God, and we put what the world says against what the word says and we recognize that God's thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are his ways and thoughts higher than ours and then we say listen God says this the world says this I go with God what happens when you go with the higher you move up higher God has called us to live in a different place in a different realm in a higher plane God wants you to live in the spirit yeah, you got a body, but he wants your body to be a tool of your spirit, not, not, not constraining your spirit. So your spirit's constraining your body, not the other way around. And when you feed on the word of God, and you say, but the Bible says this, and I'm going to do this this way, and I'm going to deny uncarnal and, ungodly, uncarnal and ungodly lust, and I'm going to meditate on what the word says. I was talking about confession, but we didn't get there. We'll get there. <clears throat> There's always tonight. All right. Hallelujah. And I begin, what happens when you begin to walk according to God's ways, walk according to God's thoughts? What happens? You begin to ascend up into that realm. Well, I'm already in that realm. I'm seated together with Christ Jesus in heaven places positionally. 
Actually, you want to know this? Everybody that's ever on, when we born and been born was raised up and made to sit with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. But there are people who reject that and people who don't walk in it. You're talking, don't, don't get positional truth and vital or actual active truth mixed up. I've been raised up with Christ, made to sit with him. You know this? I was thinking this last night when I do a study on, on the Lamb's Book of Life. Everybody's name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Every sinner you know, their name is already in the Lamb's Book of Life. But you know what? If they reject Jesus and die without him, they are blotted out. That's, you know, we, I remember the old song we sing in church. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. No, it's not. When I got saved, it didn't get written down. It's already written down before I got saved. We'll be singing, my name didn't get blotted out in glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> no, God's already wrote the names in the book. But when people die without Jesus, and at the end of the age, all those who don't receive Jesus, they're going to be blotted out. So that's a positional truth. God's not willing to any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. But the reality is not all will, and they'll get blotted out. So positional truth is we've been raised up and made to sit with him. Vital truth is the application of that and the living in that. And if we don't live in that, then sitting with him is not affecting us. You have to walk in it by faith. And one of the steps, I, I'm just ministering out of my heart, not out of notes right now. I have you on all service. Go figure. Now, that's a new one. Duh. Wow. Pastor's a whole new round today. Soccer. That's right. <laughs> Where was I? When I? Now I'm really out there. When we, when we come to the place that God's Word and the meditation is God's Word, and we judge our thoughts and actions not against what everybody else says. They that compare themselves among themselves are not wise. I can't go to Greg, and Greg can't come to me and judge our actions based on what we think is okay or not okay. I have to, and he has to, and everybody else in this room has to, go to the Word of God, move up into the place where his ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and then take what we think about it and measure it against it, and if it don't measure up, which it won't, whack! Now, the more you walk, the closer it'll get. Does that make sense? It's not that you're, you're all going to be totally left abandoned forever. It's that when you start this process, you're going to find out that most of the time, the majority of the time, 99.99% of the time, you're going to go measure yours against his, and it's not going to measure up. And you'll eventually figure out, I'll just take his. Yeah. And when you take his, it measures up. Amen. And that's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. Be, be, not, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That in, in and of itself denotes a process of time. It's going to take time to renew to the point and to begin to judge things according to the higher ways and the higher thoughts. Especially when you've got people in your ear and you've got money-grubbing dogs out there who only want money and so they'll tell you anything you want to hear. Not everybody's a money-grubbing dog, but there's people out there who just say things just because you go, you go buy their tape series and you go, buy, and you go give offerings. If I, my goodness, the fact you're still here is gives you credit. Because we don't pull any punches. Amen. And I don't tell you what you want to hear. And I know that, you know, and, and some people say that's, that's a detriment, that's a fallback. I don't know how to do it any other way. Listen, there, there are some, some things that you try to look at and say, how can I compromise like everybody else? Not everybody else, but like a couple of people I've seen. Not everybody else. It's not everybody else. How can I compromise to get a bigger crowd? You think, can I, can I, is there a way for me to compromise and still look like we're doing? And, 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 no. Sometimes I wish I could. Not really. Not really. I'm, I'm so me. And me is because he tells me that we have to do certain things a certain way. We're just going to do them the way God said to them. 
We want the bigger people. We would like to have more people, like to have more money, like to have more whatever. But you can't do it at the cost of teaching people. And not everybody does. I, I, I was just misspoke when I said that. Not everybody does that. But when people are out there doing it, mm-hmm. and they're drawing money out of the church so that we can't get done the things we need to get done, it, it's, it's bothersome. But we have to obey God and do what God said to do. You have to walk in a higher place. Because I don't want to stand before God and God say, you know, Jeff was in a tough place in his life, Ed. And he needed the weapons of his warfare to be strong. Because they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to pull down strongholds. But you didn't teach him what he needed. And it cost him the life of his child or his, of himself or their dog, their house burned down. Because you didn't teach him the right stuff. And he didn't know how to use his weapons right. And so you're going to lose reward because you didn't do your job. And besides that, destruction came to his life because you didn't do your job. I can't, I, I can't bear the weight of being responsible for not doing what God demands of the pastor or a minister to equip the saint to live in the higher ways. It's too much of a weight and too much of a burden to not do it. I want you equipped. I want to see everyone walking in the spirit, free from the dictates of the flesh. I know it's late. It's not that late. We're going to cover the dude that fell out the window. Hallelujah. Soon. I think, let me get to him after Corinthians. Paul got long preaching. And he fell out the window and had to go raise him from the dead. Aren't you glad we're on the first floor? Next Sunday we're having church on the roof. <laughs> Up on the roof. All right. Church, if we will meditate on the word and begin, remember Colossians says this, set your affection on things above and not on the earth. Why? What's in the earth? Earthly, sensual, devilish. It's a drain. And what did he say when you renew your mind to the word? You're able to prove what is God's perfect. Acceptable. God, right? I just read it. Perfect, good, and acceptable will of God. Now, how many want the imperfect, bad, and unacceptable will of God? Anybody want that? We all want what? The good, perfect, and acceptable. How do you get there? Renewing your mind. Because then you can judge it. That's right. Romans 12, 2, 2, okay. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by renewing your mind that you may prove. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. We are challenged in this era. We're living and facing things that no generation before us has had to deal with. Not, not like this. And Lord, I thank you that the Spirit of God is dealing with the saints. Encouraging them. Tell them there is a way to live above the fray, above the flesh, above the dictates of the world and live in the Spirit. And walk and commune with you. Have fellowship with you. And fulfill your purpose and will and, ex- and, and experience your pleasure for walking in the Spirit. Let us renew our minds to the Word of God. Let us lay at the feet of the Word our thoughts and our opinions, and let them be judged with the scrutiny of the sharp two-edged sword. Let it divide it asunder so that we can prove out what is your good, perfect, and acceptable will. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stand.